Uh, hello, guys. So uh, you're welcome back to this um, this lecture on the properties of rings. Basically, I want to prove one theorem that you will find in uh, almost every text that you um, you take on on rings. Okay, so it's it's basic. So we need to um, we need to uh, understand it. Okay. So um, we looked at introduction. We looked at some examples of rings. Uh, but here's um, a very classic. Um, theorem that you see. If R here is a ring with additive identity zero, okay, then for all A, B, and R, this is important. A and B are elements of, like in um, of the set R here. We have this holds. Zero times A is equal to A times zero is equal to zero. Okay. If you like this, you've seen before so many times. Now we want to use rings. Um, we want to prove it. You have A times the negative of B is the negative A times B, the same as negative A times B, negative in brackets A times B. And then we have this, okay? So basically this means that if I have this, I can actually factorize the negative out and put it on the A, or I can pull it out altogether from both and then um, first find the, um, the product and then negate it, right? Two negatives will give me a positive if you like. Okay, good. So let's prove the first one. Uh, the first one, we are going to use the fact that zero here is the additive identity, okay? Um, if you take A times zero plus A times zero, you can use the right distributive law, okay? Or the left, right? The left one and factorize your A out here. And this is zero plus zero, right? This is the same as this because, because A and B are in a ring, they must, they, they, they must obey the distributive law, right? Good. Um, um, zero plus zero, of course, is zero. Zero is an additive identity, all right? So it's zero, so you have A uh, multiplied by zero. But note this, you take a, this element, you add it to the same element, you get the element back, all right? So you take this, add it to this and you get back. What it means is that this is equal to the additive identity, right? The identity is such that if I take uh, some X plus the identity, I get X, okay? So I take this, I add it to this, I get back my element. So this has to be the identity, which is zero, see? So A times zero has to be equal to zero, you see? Okay, um, also, we can, we can write this, right? We want to prove the other side. So we've shown that, uh, we've shown that A times zero here is equal to zero. We want to show that zero times A here is equal to zero, okay? Now zero um, times A plus zero times A, we're going to do the same thing, pull out the A. So this is, if you like, the right distributive law, right? So this is equal to that, but zero plus zero is zero. So this gives us zero times A. Again, I take this element plus A times zero times A and I get the element back. So this has to be the identity. So zero times A has to be equal to zero, okay? So we've proved I, okay? Therefore, this has to be equal to that, okay? Um, then here, we want to show that, uh, yeah, explain this. This is what we want to show. So we're going to show that this is equal to that, okay? And then we'll show that this is also equal to that, therefore they are all equal, okay? So in the first one, we want to take this and then we add it to this element here. And then we show that the result is equal to zero. And therefore this has to be equal to the negative of B, okay? So let's do that. So I have A into negative B plus AB. Well, again, I can apply the left distributive law and factorize A out. So A and in brackets, I have a negative B plus B, all right? Minus B here would be the additive inverse of B. So if I add them, I get zero, the, addit um, the um, additive identity, right? So this and this will give me zero. So I have A times zero. But we, we, have, we have shown already that A times zero is zero in the, first, in the first proof, right? So this has to be equal to zero. So I take an element, I add it to another element and I get the identity. So this has to be the additive inverse of that. Right, so this has to be equal to the negative of this. Okay, so that is a proof of the first uh, of uh, of. Let me see which one did we prove now. We prove this, right? We prove this equal to that. 
Now I want to do the same thing for this. So the same technique. We'll take negative A times B plus A times B. Uh, we're going to apply the right distributive law and factorize B out and we get this. Oh, hold on. So here, this should be, um, this should be this. Let me correct it. So this guy here, um, hold on. Let me pull out my, um, my uh, stylus here and correct this. So this is, uh, this is actually A, right? This is this guy here, this A is not, uh, it's not B, right? So I pulled uh, B out, I have negative A plus A, negative A plus A is zero. So I have zero times A, but we have proved already that zero times A is zero, okay? Again, this means that this guy is a additive inverse of that. Therefore, this is equal to the negative of this, okay? So we have proved um, we have proved that this is equal to that and that is equal to that. So this is proved. The um, second one, right? So we have we have proved this. We have proved that. So we are left with the last one. I mean, you could you could actually apply the same technique um, to prove this, but we are we are going to do it in a different way, right? You could you could also prove this by showing that negative a negative b minus a b okay is equal to show that this is equal to uh, zero all right note that minus is the same as this if i take x minus y this is the same as x plus negative y see so this is the same so you, minus is basically you have plus of the negative of the element if you like um uh the uh, negative of some some element in uh, in R. Um, so so we could you could um, you could try to do this right and this can be written as plus negative a times b and then you can pull out the negative b using the left distributive law and then try to prove this okay so that's one way you could do it but we are not doing it that way we are going to just do it directly right so we have this using the first proof um, the the second proof, the II, you see, we can, this, this says we can actually pull out the negative from this and we have negative into brackets A into negative B. Again, using II, we can pull out the negative out of this and have minus A times B, right? Of course, the minus and the minus here is positive and so we end up with, um, with, uh, with this guy, okay? So we have proved um, this, if you like, the multiplicative properties of um, multiplicative properties um, of rings. Okay, so basically that's what I wanted to show in this in this video. Uh, when we come back, um, we'll start with um, ring homomorphisms and uh, ring isomorphisms. Okay, um, similar to what we did for um, for groups. Okay, so this is a short.